All right, everybody, good afternoon. It's time for the final injury report of the week. It's time to figure out whether or not these guys are likely to play. So Mike Dugar has the latest. He has the practice report from today as well as the game statuses. Let's go ahead and dive in. There's quite a bit to get through here, and there's some pretty interesting stuff. So to boil it down to the stuff that we really care about, because at the end of the day, we can only care so much whether or not a player is participating in practice. What we want to know is, does it translate to them being available in the actual game? We have two players who are out and two players who are doubtful. So that's pretty good. Now, doubtful usually means out. So if you want to say we got four players who aren't going to play in this game, that still beats where we were a couple of days ago or even yesterday. So can't be too upset. However, one of the guys who is out is Artie Burns, a guy who played last week, got out of that game without having any kind of a notable injury issue, and was somebody we were probably counting on to be our nickel corner. So Artie Burns is out, and that could upset our plans a little bit. Trey Brown's also out, although I think we all expected that. He's in concussion protocol. It would have been weird if he came back in that quickly. So no Artie Burns, no Trey Brown. Also, probably no Charles Cross, and probably no Kobe Bryant. So, we've got a cornerback issue right now, it looks like. And all three of those guys may have been nickel corner options for us in this game. So, not ideal, exactly. Um, the good news is, if you read between the lines on what Pete had to say on um, some of these players, it sounds like the questionable guys are going to go. So Draymond Jones, questionable. And the interesting thing here is that Draymond Jones did not practice at all this week, but is still, according to Pete, kind of expected to play. So I don't know how to feel about that, but uh, we do need him out there, so that's good. Uh, Derek Hall, questionable. He was a full participant in practice today, though, so it makes sense that we would expect him to play. Noah Fant is questionable, which kind of comes out of nowhere because he was not listed on the injury report at all, but he did not participate on, I'm sorry, he was not listed in the practice report until today, but uh, something flared up, I guess, today, did not practice due to his knee and is questionable, but expected to play. Evan Brown, also questionable. He actually missed practice today as well, but both those guys are relative veterans. I know they're not like 10-year veterans, but they've been in the league a while. It makes sense that you would give them a day off every now and then. I do find it interesting, though, that they can miss practice on the last day and still be good to go. But if you take Pete at his word, those guys are going to play. We also have Will Disley, questionable, but he was a full participant today, so it makes sense. So not too bad overall. If you if Pete is correct and all of these questionable guys play, then we should be able to get through. Because look at the guys who aren't listed on the uh, final injury report at all. You've got Julian Love, who we're going to lean on heavily now because we need a nickel corner. Quandre Diggs, not listed at all. And he was a full participant in practice today. Same with Julian Love. Phil Haynes, full participant, not listed, should be good to go. Jamal Adams and Requel, and of course we expected them to play all week, but they're not listed. DK Metcalf is not listed on the injury report. Jaron Reed, Nwosu, Taylor. So a lot of these guys kind of cleared up by the end of the week. I mean, we're, we're already a few weeks into the season, and at this point, who's really feeling completely 100%? Very few people. So at the end of the day, this is not a terrible place to be. But um, if you try to um, cross-reference the practice report with the injury report, I think it's pretty easy to assume that Cross will not play because he didn't practice at all this week, and same for Kobe Bryant. Um, I, I do have some reservations about Draymond Jones playing if he did not make a single practice this week. That might be Pete kind of uh, being a little optimistic there, but we'll find out Monday night. We'll find out Monday night, and... I guess it's uh, maybe a little Jacob Sykes, maybe a little Matt Gotell if he can't go. But um, Pete sounded like he was going to play. And generally speaking, when he doesn't know or he's not feeling great about it, he's just kind of vague. He doesn't say, oh, we, we have a good feeling the guy's going to play if he actually thinks he's not going to play. So 
going to be some interesting developments here. Um, if some of these questionable guys take a bad turn, especially a guy like an Evan Brown, a Will Disley, uh, and combined with a Noah fan, by the way, that would leave our tight end room really a mess. We'd probably have to call up Mabry and lean heavily on Brady Russell, which would be a big uh, change to what we've been able to do the last couple weeks. I, uh, I, I could see things kind of going in a bad direction, but as of right now, if you parse through the language being used by the coaches, it seems like we're going to be okay. The big challenge is going to be getting Julian Love through this game 100% healthy because he's going to need to play a lot because we are just plain and simple running out of corners. If Julian Love were to go down in this game, who would be our nickel corner? Our slot guy. It would be Jarek Reed. It would be um, uh, may maybe Tease Tabor. It it gets really tough. All right, so there's your injury report for the Seahawks. Could be worse. Could definitely be better, but it's football. It's always going to be something. So on the Giants side of things, they've got some... It, it's a short injury report, but like I've said all week about the Giants, it's a huge injury report. So... Andrew Thomas, out. So after some optimism that he could play earlier this week, it's not happening. Which means the Giants' offensive line is the same really, really rough offensive line that it's been through the first uh, couple of weeks of the season. They don't have their best guy now. They've got Evan Neal, who's been really, really rough out there. They've got John Michael Schmitz, who has not been good to start his career. He's a rookie. What do you expect? Uh, Mark Lewinsky's been benched because he just can't perform anymore. Uh, our old buddy Mark Lewinsky, by the way. And it, it's just a really bad offensive line right now. So Andrew Thomas not being out there, no excuse. Take advantage. And I know I said the same thing about the Rams offensive line a few weeks ago, but Matt Stafford is a, while healthy, is a better quarterback than Daniel Jones, and he's more capable of doing things like get, getting the ball out of his hands quickly to offset bad offensive line. Is Daniel Jones going to be able to do that? You wouldn't expect so. So Andrew Thomas not being out is massive. Also probably not in this game is uh, Saquon Barkley. He's listed as doubtful. Obviously there's some belief that he has a chance, but if he does play, is that even really desirable? Do you even want him out there if it's so close that he's actually listed as doubtful? So doubtful is like 25%, right? So if he's not right and he tries to go, is that really going to be something that the Giants and their fans even desire? So probably no Saquon. So you're looking at an offense without their best offensive lineman and without their best playmaker. So no excuses. There can be no excuses they're shallow at receiver, so missing all those defensive backs should be not the end of the world. And you are getting some guys in your defensive backfield back. You're getting Woolen back. You're getting Adams back. So put it all together, while their injury report is very short, it's pretty big. These are two of the Giants' best players, and probably their two best players on offense, just period. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Go Hawks. I'm going to stream the Huskies game in about three hours. See you guys there. We'll know a lot more about the Mariners and their situation when that uh, when uh, that game starts. So we'll probably be talking about that a little bit as well. But see you tonight for the Huskies. Go Hawks. And there's your injury reports for both sides going into the game.